In May of 1991, Warner Brothers officially embarked on an aggressive strategy to produce and market a slew of family-friendly movies and television shows. They introduced the world to their brand new production label named, appropriately enough, Warner Brothers Family Entertainment, focused exclusively on the lucrative kid market. Of course, a new production label meant a new logo. Hi, I'm Michael Cahill. Before we dive into the logo verse, just a quick reminder. If you happen to enjoy this content, please remember to like and subscribe for even more videos. Speaking of videos, let's get back to this one. At the time, watching a film suitable for the whole family most likely meant seeing this guy's name in the opening credits. For decades, Disney owned the family market, but Warner Brothers planned to change all that. Disney had the iconic Mickey Mouse as their mascot, so it was only natural that Warners would choose the equally iconic Bugs Bunny to act as theirs. With Bugs as their mascot, Warners chose the perfect fanfare to accompany him, a reworking of the song Merrily We Roll Along. Otherwise known as the unmistakable theme to the Merry Melodies cartoons, that song dates all the way back to 1935, when it made its film debut in the animated short, Billboard Frolics. Here we see the first version of the logo, done in traditional hand-drawn animation, reflecting an effort to appeal to younger audiences. We open on the familiar Warner Brothers shield, set against a cloudy blue sky. Bugs Bunny, wearing his best tuxedo, reaches up from behind the shield and slaps the ring-shaped banner around it. He spins the banner as the byline, a Time Warner Entertainment Company, appears below. Bugs then steps beside the shield and leans against it, stopping the banner, where we now see the words, Family Entertainment. But it was the next version of the logo that became the label's defining image. This time, the banner appears around the shield from the very beginning. Bugs, still in that classy suit, makes his grand entrance by sliding out from behind the shield. He proudly gestures to the symbol before leaning against it. While Bugs chomps his signature carrot, a light shimmers along the banner, emphasizing the family entertainment name. That terrific animation was the work of animator Bill Waldman, who later went on to have a hand in many Disney productions like Pocahontas and Mulan, but he was a mainstay at Warner's, where he animated projects featuring the Looney Tunes, Scooby-Doo, and Tom and Jerry. June of 1993 saw the premiere of Dennis the Menace, the first film released under the WB Family Entertainment label. Directed by Nick Castle, best known as the original actor to play Michael Myers, the film was written and co-produced by John Hughes, fresh off the remarkable success of the first two Home Alone movies. Warners was no doubt hoping to replicate that same success with Dennis the Menace. But while it fell far short of the heights reached by the Home Alone movies, Dennis the Menace was nevertheless a healthy box office hit. Their next film, released that same summer, centered on a juvenile delinquent named Jesse, who forms an endearing friendship with a captive orca whale. A sleeper hit, Free Willy took the world by storm, grossing $153 million at the box office and winning praise from critics. Two films released less than a month apart, both commercially successful. The family entertainment division was off to a good start. 1993 also saw the premiere of The Secret Garden, a well-reviewed adaptation of the 1909 novel that brought in a total of 40 million off a budget of 15 million, a much more modest success compared to their previous two films. The year ended on a weak note when The Nutcracker failed to win over audiences, pulling in just 2 million off a budget of 19 million. A month later, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, the first animated film released by the Family Entertainment label, also came up short, failing to make back its $6 million budget. Although that film would find an enthusiastic audience on the all-important home video market, inspiring several straight-to-video follow-ups. Sadly, 
Over the next 10 years, genuine box office hits for the family brand were few and far between. With the notable exceptions of Free Willy 2 The Adventure Home in 1995 and Space Jam in 1996. Their live action bombs included the adaptations of Black Beauty and A Little Princess, along with Born to be Wild, which currently boasts an impressive 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Free Willy the Rescue, which did so poorly it beached the Free Willy franchise. As difficult as things might have been on the live action side, nothing compared to the disasters of their animated films. In 1979, animator Don Bluth famously quit his job at Disney, frustrated by that studio's aimless direction and subpar films. Striking out on his own, Bluth scored big with An American Tale in 1986 and The Land Before Time in 1988. For a brief moment, it looked as if Bluth might actually surpass Disney as America's animation powerhouse. But the Disney Renaissance soon put an end to that possibility. In 1994, the same year The Lion King roared onto the big screen, Warners released Thumbelina, Don Bluth's adaptation of the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale. Rejected by audiences and dismissed by critics, Thumbelina was quickly forgotten. Oddly enough, according to an article from the LA Times, Warners previewed Thumbelina to test audiences, and the film scored much higher when Warners replaced their own logo with the one from Disney. Maybe audiences just had more faith in an animated film if it came from the Mouse House. But whatever the reason, Thumbelina's failure was only the beginning. Warners went on to release two more Don Bluth films. The second was A Troll in Central Park, which, believe it or not, only grossed a little over $71,000 in North America, making it one of the biggest animated bombs in cinema history. The third was 1995's The Pebble and the Penguin. Developed at MGM, the movie suffered from studio interference and a string of production problems, leading Don Bluth to remove his name from the credits. Warners handled foreign distribution only, which no doubt softened the blow when the Pebble and the Penguin proved yet another costly bomb. Warners continued searching for a hit in the animated genre, releasing more flops like Cats Don't Dance, Quest for Camelot, The King and I, and The Iron Giant, although that film would live on as a beloved cult classic, regarded by many as one of the best animated movies ever produced. But unfortunately, that love just wasn't there in 1999. While their animated films consistently failed at the box office, Warners found much more success with their animated TV shows. Mask of the Phantasm might have underperformed, but Batman the Animated Series remained a juggernaut on the small screen. Celebrated for its sophisticated storytelling, pitch-perfect performances, and atmospheric visuals. The show spawned numerous spin-offs, action figures, comic books, and has been voted the second greatest animated TV series behind only The Simpsons. After partnering with Steven Spielberg and Amblin Entertainment, Warners premiered Tiny Toon Adventures in 1992. Continuing that partnership, Warners and Spielberg developed Animaniacs, a throwback to the wild energy of the classic Merry Melodies shorts. Debuting in 1993 under the Family Entertainment label, Animaniacs was a smash hit, becoming an icon in its own right, and leading to the successful spin-off Pinky and the Brain. Other popular shows included Tasmania, Freakazoid, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, and the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries. Officially, the Family Entertainment division ended in 2009, although their logo hadn't been used for theatrical films in North America since the year 2000, beginning with the release of My Dog Skip. This logo is much more than just an interesting footnote in the history of Warner Brothers. It truly is an artifact of the glorious VHS era, representing a time that gave many 90s kids some of their favorite memories. I'm Michael Cahill, 
Thanks for watching, and until next time.